Hey guys, it's Peter with the Garden Family. We're going to talk about blossom end rot today, why it's happening in your garden, and what you can do to prevent it. Blossom end rot is rotting of the blossom end of the fruit, and it happens because of lack of calcium during fruit development. Because scientists have proven that it's due to lack of available calcium to the fruit, there's a ton of misinformation regarding this and how to treat it. I was online this morning and a brand new gardener posted on one of the gardening forums asking what was wrong with their tomatoes and put up a picture of blossom end rot. While most people did identify it correctly as blossom end rot, the advice she got was not helpful. People were saying put tums in the ground, cracked eggshells, uh, a lot of Epsom salt comments, none of which really get at the root cause of what causes blossom end rot. In order to see why that advice wasn't useful, we're gonna to have to talk a little bit about plant biology. Plants really have two main vascular types. There's the xylem of the plant and the phloem of the plant. The phloem is where they move sugar after photosynthesis, and that doesn't really come into play much when talking about blossom end rot, but the xylem is really what comes into play. The xylem is how the plant carries water and minerals to the different portions of the plant. The xylem is a passive system, so really it's just water is pulled through the plant through a process of evaporation by the leaves called transpiration. These leaves have small holes in them, and those holes is what allows CO2 to come into the plant, but those holes also allow water to escape through the leaves. As water evaporates through the leaves, new water is brought up from the roots through the stem to those leaves to replace it. In times of high water stress, when it's really hot, when it's not very humid, and when you haven't watered enough, the leaves are evaporating very quickly because it's so hot. They're, the stomata, the little openings, are open for a long period of time because it's so sunny and there's a lot of photosynthesis going on. And so the, the xylem flow, so sort of the water and mineral flow of the plant, gets pulled to the leaves. Now the fruit is different. The fruit does not have stomata. And so in those times of high heat, low humidity, high sun, and high water stress, the leaves really dominate the flow of the water and minerals. Now calcium is a mineral and it's dissolved in its ionic form in the water that the plant takes up. And so when the plant is water stressed and the leaves are transpiring a lot, the calcium and the, and the water that carries the calcium cannot get to the developing fruit. So it's those times of water stress that cause a relative unavailability of calcium to the fruit. And it's not because there's not enough calcium in the soil. That can happen in really rare instances, but pretty much all of the blossom end rot that, that you're seeing and that people are concerned about is generally caused by inconsistent moisture levels and high water stress of the plant. So what are the things that are going to make your plants at risk for developing blossom end rot? As we just talked about, high heat, low humidity, long sunny days, and lack of consistent moisture to the roots of the plant. Now some tomato plants are more susceptible to blossom end rot and in general the paste type tomatoes, for example San Marzano or Amish paste or a Juliet type tomato, just as examples, they tend to get blossom end rot more often. The other thing that will cause your tomatoes to be more susceptible to blossom end rot is overabundance of foliage. Remember it's the leaves that have the stomata that allow the transpiration or the evaporation of the water and, and diverting the calcium away from the developing fruit. So if you've over fertilized your plant early and it's developed a ton of leaves and very little fruit in the early season 
and then you hit really high temperatures and uh, you have inconsistent watering, those leaves are going to cause a tremendous amount of evaporation and generally will divert some of the water and calcium away from the developing fruit and put the plant more susceptible to blossom end rot. Some of the advice our friend the new gardener got online was put eggshells around the plant. As we've already said, there's generally enough calcium in the soil and the issue is really that water is not able to bring that calcium to the fruit, so that's not going to help them. The same thing goes with Tums, similar thing, it's a source of calcium, but if the xylem of the plant, the vasculature of the plant, can't bring that calcium to the fruit, it's not going to help. Epsom salt actually could predispose the plant to blossom end rot because it's magnesium sulfate and it does not contain calcium at all, so it's not even providing calcium to the soil. And the magnesium ions can compete with calcium when they're dissolved in water. Um, the water can only hold a certain number of ions, so the more ions it has that are not calcium, the less calcium it can carry. So hopefully if you're following at this point, you'll realize how you can prevent blossom end rot. The main thing is consistent watering of the, your plants and do not let them have water stress, which will divert calcium away from the developing fruit. Mulching also helps as it will keep the, the ground moist very consistently and not allow it to dry out between waterings. If you have low amounts of organic matter in your soil, amending it with organic matter will also help absorb water and keep consistent uh, amounts of water available to the plant. And also you want to avoid high nitrogen fertilizers in the beginning when you're getting the plant established. If you over fertilize, and it's easy to do with the soluble fertilizers such as miracle Grow, you're going to get a tremendous amount of vegetative growth on the plant and that vegetative growth will cause over evaporation from the leaves and can lead to blossom end rot. Also if you're consistently having problems with blossom end rot you can avoid paste type tomatoes as they're more susceptible to it. The other thing and lots of gardeners don't have an option here but planting in containers in general it's harder to maintain consistent moisture levels so you tend to see more incidences of blossom end rot in tomatoes that are planted in containers. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys and cleared up a big gardening myth. Happy gardening everyone!